make someone reach beyond the boundaries of human experience to face the unknown. As children, we question the world around us. We learn, we accept, and gradually we lose our capacity for wonder. But some do not. The explorers, the seekers of truth. It is these pioneers who define the future of mankind. Tomb Raider is a very special franchise to me. I fell in love with the game when I first played it on my Sega Saturn back in the day, and it just gave you that Indiana Jones type of feel that you wanted out of your action-adventure games. The game had great sequels coming up, and then towards the end of the life cycle of the last generation consoles like PS1 and PS2, the game started losing that flair that made Tomb Raider so special. I thought that one Tomb Raider game, I want to say it was like uh, Wrath of the Tomb Raider or Dark of the Tomb Raider, was one of the very last ones that came out that was a very, very horrible Tomb Raider. I think it was like the Darkness something. I couldn't remember the title because it was such a horrible game. I'm so glad that Square decided not only to revive it and give it that fresh new updated reboot that the game needed, but it stayed true to its roots as far as it being an action-adventure game. More of adventure comes first, and then action came second, but the blend that they put together just meshed so well, and I really, really love that about the reboot. Rise of the Tomb Raider picks up where the last one left off in relation to the presentation of the game. Square did an amazing job as far as making this game seem almost flawless as far as the presentation. It's an absolutely gorgeous looking game. Not only is the game extremely gorgeous, but it is so demanding for a PC to push out the graphics that this game wants. Just the amount of detail with the walls, the sunlight, reflections, everything is done almost flawlessly. If you notice when you're playing the game, you still have those elements like in the first edition as far as your, um, I guess, eagle quote unquote vision, the climbing mechanics, the scavenging, all of that comes back in this game. One of the things that I did notice that they ended up tweaking up a little bit is the way that the climbing mechanics are. The climbing mechanics in this game, I think that they overhauled them compared to the previous version. I wouldn't say a complete overhaul, but in a sense that they tweaked it, they refined it. You no longer do you have those little tweak sessions of you trying to scale up a wall or climbing or whatever, or when you're trying to scavenge that you have to go back around in loops various times to pick up items. You don't have that in this. Granted, you might have the few skips and sometimes it doesn't read, you know, your normal type of things, but it wasn't to the extent how the original version was, where it felt really clunky and unnatural. This version does not have that. It's almost completely flawless. The action is so action-packed. From the start of the game up until the end of the game, it is literally pedal to the metal, no holds barred, everything that you would expect to come up and a couple of surprises along the way it's done perfectly it is an amazing experience and i would recommend anybody to experience it your trusted bow and arrow makes a repeat in this i think a lot of the games when they started going through that era last generation of involving a bow and arrow that they just keep wanting to include it in these games but the bow and arrow feels more natural in this tomb raider than it did in the previous installment Granted, you're going to have your upgrading sessions as far as putting, you know, a new bowstring and all of that stuff to make it aim better, but as far as the feel, the pulling back, the draw, the tension, it feels so much more natural than in the previous installments. You're also going to have your standard weapons, shotguns, AKs, all of that good jazz for running and gunning. That's not really my approach of how I come this or how I attack this game. I like the more stealthy bow and arrow classic kind of feel, you know, that that's just my particular play style. But the way that they left this game, they left it open-ended where you can approach every situation in a different fashion or however you feel comfortable. If you're the run and gun type, hey, go guns a blazing. 
If you're more of the stealth type, like I am, then you're going to have the more stealth approach. And then sometimes other people have a more balanced stealth slash run and gun type of feel. The game does a really good job of catering to various play types as far as, you know, the way that you as an individual wants to play a game. I can't reiterate how beautiful this game is. You're going to look at this game and think, wow, is this CG? Is this actual game? About 90% of this game is all in-game action. It's not much CG. I mean, all of this stuff that you're seeing right now is real-time, excluding for that first cutscene in the beginning. The game is absolutely breathtaking. Like I said, it's completely action-packed from the get-go. There is no boring moment in this game. The challenge tombs, I really like what they did with the challenge tombs this time around. They made the puzzles a little bit more challenging and make you think outside of the box as far as your approach on some of the challenge tombs. One thing I didn't like about that was that you still have your backtracking scenario where you have to backtrack to other challenge tombs rather than giving you other options to approach that tomb because you need to have certain items to get in. I guess it kind of makes sense, but in the same token, I kind of felt, hey, you didn't really necessarily need to do that. I mean, because it doesn't make sense that you're towards the end of the game just to get this one item, a cutting knife or whatever it is that you need, just to backtrack to the first section of the game where you started to do a challenge tomb that you got there. I couldn't understand that and I couldn't wrap my head around it. The enemies are a little bit more beefy like this. You see the shield type guys, so you have to do certain counters to kill them and come approach and things like that. But one of the things that I really noticed about the AI is that they're extremely stupid. Like you can be in an area poison a couple of guys and their bodies are on the ground because you can't hide them you can't pick them up and hide them they won't allow you to do that and then you have your standard patrol walking by and they just hey here's a random dead body no alarms or nothing go off and i found that very odd coming from a game like metal gear solid where the ai is extremely intelligent i wouldn't say that necessarily ruins the fun of the game i just thought that it kind of decreased the difficulty of the game because I felt that in certain situations like that, the game should be more challenging. You should have alarms. You should have people going ape shit trying to find you. And then that doesn't necessarily happen in this game when enemies come across random bodies. I found that pretty odd. Overall, this game is fantastic. I would recommend that if you have not played it, pick it up, play it. This to me is more of like a keeper. I can see myself replaying this game a couple of times just to do 100% completion or to play some of the um, extra modes that they have. You have options to do like, you know, little tricks like big head mode and things like that, which I thought were great. Overall, I would give this game a 9.75. I wouldn't give it the perfect 10. It would have a perfect 10 for me if it weren't for the AI being so dumb. Just being dumb. I felt that the AI should have been a little bit smarter. And as far as the, the flaky controls on some of the guns before you upgrade them, it shouldn't be that flaky off of the bat. I mean, regardless. But overall, that's my review, guys. I hope that you guys enjoy it. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash group slash scum nation. My name is Cujo, PTFO or GTFO, bitch. I'm out.